Hello, my name is Diego from the Hit Music Studio, and in this video is going to be our part three of this series, so you can learn how to play Sweet Dreams by Eurythmics, the whole song, and definitely if you haven't, go ahead and check the other two tutorials so you can learn those other parts first. But in this one, we're going to cover the actual keyboard solo. It's like a synth solo. I really like it. I think it's a part that is very cleverly put together, not super hard, but at the same time, pretty cool. So first up, I would say try to choose a lead sound, a sound that has not only a little bit of power, but the notes you when you press them sound a little bit longer. They don't necessarily decay because that's a cool thing about the solo is that you're playing these notes, holding them against chords that almost make it sound cool. Now, the second thing that I would like to mention is that you need to be able to, when you're going to play this uh, in its entirety, make sure that you can switch quickly from the chord that is coming before into and which is the first riff. So you want to play that chord probably, hopefully, on a different keyboard because you should do that probably with a different sound and then jump into the lead. I like to play with two keyboards, but maybe you don't have access to that. You can always try to change the sound between the two parts. When you do the next six notes, the next six notes are 16th notes, and those are very quick. So one thing that I want you to do is to try to choose fingers that are strong so that way you can play this easily. This is going to be finger one on a B flat, followed by finger two on C, and then finger four on E flat. And it's this. Which is probably a good idea to take those notes and play them and repeat them, cycle it. Just to get your hand to get almost familiar with them, play them correctly. Now, this rhythmically is gonna land on, I believe it's after three, so it's gonna be one, two, three. So right after you say three, you have to play that. And it's quick and you don't want to anticipate it. You don't want to play it so fast that you're almost getting that last note, which is a C, uh, played incorrectly or played ahead of where it should be. Immediately after, I want you to move. I'm going to play the solo in its entirety a little bit slow so you can use it as a reference. But uh, here, where you're going to move and put your finger three on E flat. And we're going to do E flat, F, G, E flat again, and C. So it sounds like this. Not very hard. This uh, C minor chord. Now, then we're going to move again, and this has a couple of shifts of position, and we're going to do G, B flat, and C. I would suggest fingers uh, 1, 3, and 4. And lastly, we want to move again, and put your finger 4 on F sharp, and do this. Which again is also a very cool group of notes that sound, I think, very nice. So in this case, one thing that I definitely want to try to almost mention is that the importance of holding the notes because it's not this that's not what the solo sounds like the solo the notes are being held so it almost sounds cool two three four two three four one two three now here for example in this case you can almost re replace while you hold the note Replace to finger one, so that way you can have the next notes almost in position. So I want you to try to hold those notes as long as you can. Try to use the original recording to kind of like check how long those notes are being held. But keep in mind that that solo really needs power, needs volume, and it definitely needs those notes to be longer. So I don't think that solo is particularly challenging, but it's one of those that sometimes I think people get a little bit confused into what the notes are, especially for our students. So now here, let me go ahead and slow it down on my track. And I want to play it so for you guys. So you have the reference, and you can use that almost to practice. So I'm going to play it, count one, two, three and then try to get you guys to play it, uh, hopefully, with me. So this is going to sound like this. One, two, three. Now, one of the last things that I do want to mention is the importance of being ready for the next part. I think one of the things that this uh, song has, it's uh, you're going to be changing between parts. So it's almost like not only you need to play that, but you need to go after that and holding the last note, which uh, I think is a C, into playing the pattern. 
So as a keyboard player, you don't want to get lost, they play the next part incorrectly because you're switching between sections. And that's something that you definitely need to practice with the recording so you can almost feel like what it's like to play the solo and then going to the next part and almost play the next part without like almost rushing and making it sound like a little bit like you're anxious. So hopefully this video is helpful to get you to be able to play. Check the other two, uh, part one and part two, so you can do the song in its entirety. I want to mention that I think it's so important to learn songs completely because you never know when are you have the chance to play this with someone else but if you just learn bits and pieces and oh yeah i know that song oh yeah but i only know the riff it's like well that's not really that usable so i think in, when you're talking about songs i think there's two really cool things about learning songs completely one study them so you can almost learn from how a song this successful gets put together and at the same time so you can actually use it to perform with other people if you would like more information about what we do check our main website thehitmusicstudio.com we want to thank you for watching and we'll see you guys on the next one take care Thank you.